Right when 3i Atlas reaches maximum solar heat, when the mysteries of our third confirmed interstellar visitor should at last be revealed, Earth loses sight. For six crucial weeks, every telescope becomes worthless in the overpowering glare of the sun. This isn't merely an astronomer's worst fear. This precise blackout period would be the ideal cover for anything seeking to alter course undetected. But just before the countdown to 3i Atlas, changing its trajectory began. Shockwaves struck the scientific community. James Webb recorded a carbon dioxide to water ratio eight times greater than any comet ever observed. Mars flybys discovered persistent asymmetry, and KK's nickel maps showed chemistry that shouldn't occur. What aren't we observing while the sky turns dark? And what will determine if this story concludes in December with routine comet science, or a fundamental rewrite of everything we understand? Solar glare is complete. When 3i Atlas passed behind the sun from Earth's viewpoint, every instrument, optical, infrared, radar encounters a wall nearly a million miles thick. On October 21st, the geometry locks in. New moon, superior conjunction, and the object's nearest approach to the sun just eight days away. For six weeks, the sky is inaccessible. This isn't a technical failure or a bureaucratic holdup. It's physics. The sun's disk consumes the line of sight. Even the most powerful telescopes tuned to detect faint signatures from the edge of the solar system can't penetrate through that kind of radiance. Not in visible light, not in radio, not even with the most advanced thermal images. The blackout is complete. Numbers matter here. At conjunction, the separation between 3i Atlas and the Sun, as observed from Earth, falls under 1 degree. That's less than two solar diameters. The object's own signal, already weak, gets submerged into the solar corona, a plasma sea hotter than a million kilardier. The glare zone stretches 965,000 miles, making any effort to observe through it akin to seeing a candle obscured by a floodlight from the opposite end of a football field. Radar, which can occasionally detect nearby objects to the sun, also loses coherence in this mix of charged particles and magnetic turmoil. Mission planners know the timeline by memory. Blackout begins on October 21st, and on October 29th at perihelion, solar heating reaches its peak, revealing a comet's hidden secrets in gas and dust. However, this time Earth is unable to see exactly when the comet is most exposed and ready to disclose its true characteristics, resulting in no direct images, spectra, or reflected sunlight. For six weeks, 3i Atlas offers only silence. This is significant because any changes, outgassing, fragmentation, or course adjustments would occur out of sight, creating a perfect opportunity for anything wishing to alter its trajectory unnoticed. The blackout represents not merely an observational void but a challenge to the faith in physics, models, and the boundaries of illumination. When the object finally reappears in December, all predictions, theories, and calculations made during this blind period will be scrutinized. Meanwhile, the countdown persists and the sky remains unlit. Records are crucial. Before the blackout, every prominent observatory hurried to uncover what made 3i Atlas unusual. The James Webb Space Telescope, at Dr. Melissa Jang's urgent request, observed the object on September 18th, revealing an unexpected infrared spectrum, a carbon dioxide to water vapor ratio of eight to one. This is not an error. In typical comets, water prevails, yet here the ratio is inverted significantly, an outlier by six standard deviations. JWST identified substantial carbon dioxide, moderate carbon monoxide, and traces of carbonyl sulfide, with isotope ratios resembling solar but the rest of the chemistry diverging from expectations. Internal NASA communications indicate how close this data was to being withheld, as Jang's team insisted that skipping the peak solar heating could leave the field in darkness indefinitely. In parallel, Japan's KK Observatory analyzed the coma in August and September, noting bright nickel lines and faint iron lines. The outgassing was not random, with gas and dust flowing sunward, forming a narrow, asymmetric plume. Peer reviewers were cautious, worrying that the nickel anomaly might be an illusion or a calibration mistake, but the reduction pipeline verified its accuracy. No artifact or instrument ghosting involved. The nickel presence was confirmed, the iron absence noted, and the geometry skewed. The coma extended nearly 6,000 kilometers in narrow-band images, 
with mass loss rates around 150 kilos per second, while water production lagged at just 40 kilos per second, signifying something atypical about this object's chemistry and propulsion system. Hubble's images taken on July 2 corroborated ground telescope suspicions, revealing a broad, smooth, teardrop-shaped coma, rare among solar system comets. No sharp jets or jagged edges, only a consistent surrounding glow. While the nucleus remained concealed, light curve analysis from Rubin Observatory's pre-discovery images on June 21 allowed teams to estimate its size at 5 to 6 kilometers across, rotating slowly and nearly imperceptibly, without wild fluctuations in brightness or rapid spin, merely a large, cold, quiet traveler. On October 3rd, Mars assets captured their opportunity. With ESA's Mars Express and Nicholas Thomas's CASIS team observing the object as it passed 0.19 astronomical units from Mars, the coma was faint yet active, gradually outgassing toward the Sun, and the images and spectra indicated ongoing sun-facing activity right up to blackout. Internal ESA records detail a tense discussion over the timing of data publication, but transparency prevailed. With public confirmation on October 8, the flow geometry, chemistry, and light all suggested an object that deviates from the usual norms, with carbon dioxide dominating water, nickel overtaking iron, and the coma exhibiting a smooth sunward stable shape. The nucleus is sizable, slow and quiet, and the Mars flyby data confirms the activity is genuine, not an illusion caused by Earth's atmosphere or telescope software. Presenting the fingerprints to monitor, any changes or deviations from these markers when the object re-emerges in December will carry significant implications. With three interstellar objects making up the complete catalog, amid trillions of rocks and ice balls drifting in the galaxy, only three have traversed the Sun's vicinity while humanity was observing Oumuamua, the first, which passed through at a steep angle without approaching a planet, followed by the second, Borisov, which came in swiftly and high above the ecliptic, and now 3i Atlas appears on a seemingly scripted trajectory, just five to Greer off the solar system's main plane, navigating the planetary lanes as if it belongs. The odds of such alignment sit at around 1 in 20,000. Not impossible, but an unusual figure for random occurrences. Here's how the probabilities compare. Typically, interstellar objects should arrive at random angles scattered across the sky, while the ecliptic, the flat disk-shaped region in which planets orbit, constitutes a narrow band with only a small section of space aligned with it. So for an interstellar visitor to enter along that plane at such a minimal inclination is more than a mere happenstance. It piques interest but doesn't yet raise alarms. Astronomers caution against inferring too much from a singular instance given merely three ISOs documented each new arrival appears as an outlier, and small sample statistics can mislead. If the next dozen interstellar comets exhibit similar alignments, then the narrative evolves. As trajectory involves more than just angle, the trajectory of 3i Atlas takes it near several planets, with close encounters occurring with Mars in October, Venus in November, and Jupiter next spring, each of which provides an opportunity for gravitational influences to adjust its orbit emphasizing the critical importance of pre-blackout astrometry for establishing a baseline from log data, as any discrepancies after conjunction could indicate changes, whether from natural occurrences or otherwise, but caution is needed since even unusual events can happen in our busy solar system, making December's reappearance crucial to confirm or refute the trajectory predictions, with the October skies already busy with solar activity that spurred discussions and theories about possible connections to the blackout of 3i Atlas, despite professional clarifications attributing the blackout to alignment rather than equipment failure. While Isabel Ruiz's observations of several comets generated a buzz online, highlighting a detection bias rather than a coordinated cosmic event. Ruiz's excitement continued as she noted a slight luminescence trailing 3i Atlas in amateur photographs potentially indicating a fragment or a companion, while experts advised caution, stating that without astrometric validation, claims of fragments or engineered buffers remain merely assertions. The Minor Planet Center and JPL recorded all credible reports maintaining a watch for December's imaging window, when the object re-emerges from behind the sun, thus resolving the fragment debate. Despite the noise from the October space weather spike, complicating models with changing solar wind conditions, 
yet having no instrument failures, data blackouts or abrupt control losses, only the ongoing fluctuations of charged particles and the usual turmoil of solar maximum, for modelers, every CME and geomagnetic fluctuation added another variable to consider, amplifying uncertainty for the pivotal December test, ultimately affirming that the surge was real, but not the cause of the blackout, which belonged to celestial mechanics, while the excitement viral postings and fragment speculations contributed to the narrative, science maintains its position, with the real evaluation pending for clear skies to provide new data. Avi Loeb envisions the solar Oberth scenario, proposing that 3i Atlas might function as more than just a comet, behaving like a probe that could alter its trajectory at perihelion using the sun's gravity, concealed in darkness when Earth cannot observe, with proof only observable after a marked deviation in the object's trajectory upon its December reappearance. The test is straightforward, requiring major observatories like Rubin, Hubble and JWST, along with ground arrays, to monitor the object's position to within 10 milliarc seconds, the size of a coin viewed from a thousand kilometers away, where if 3i Atlas adheres to its predicted orbit, the narrative concludes with conventional physics, rendering it a mere exotic comet. However, a deviation of even 100 milliarc seconds corresponding to a 10 millis change in velocity cannot be explained by standard comet models, as outgassing would be too feeble and sluggish, necessitating a sudden and intentional force to align with the data. Mainstream astronomers are cautious, citing the erratic nature of comet activity unpredictable jets and irregular mass loss that might alter a nucleus's trajectory. Yet the accuracy of this test leaves little room for doubt, making December a binary outcome, either the measurements align or something unforeseen has transpired, with Loeb's hypothesis precariously poised. As astrometry not conjecture will determine the conclusion, every pixel, every timestamp, every arc second is crucial, and the countdown is not merely to a reappearance but to a decision, as Rubin Observatory adjusts the odds. Before its complete survey cycle, interstellar objects were infrequent occurrences, typically appearing once every few years at best. However, with nightly observations and automated processes, the perspective shifts from rare anecdote to comprehensive record, leading to dozens of interstellar objects discovered annually. Rather than a mere trickle, the influx is a deluge, with each new find meticulously catalogued with exact timing, color, and trajectory, transforming anomalies into statistical data. The next time a hyperbolic visitor crosses the ecliptic, it will not be an isolated report, but part of a larger collection, verified against an expanding database. This represents the future of interstellar object research, where every orbit, every outgassing ratio, and every fragment trail is analyzed, compared, and compiled. Patterns that once seemed questionable, such as low inclination entries or close planetary encounters, transition from sources of debate to subjects of empirical testing. The same applies to chemical analyses featuring six sigma carbon dioxide ratios, nickel-rich comas, and teardrop-shaped luminescence. With a sufficient number of samples, the distinction between rare and routine becomes clearer, shifting the focus from individual case studies to broader population studies. Rubin's influence transcends mere statistics, it hinges on timing. Early identification allows for increased preparation time for space-based resources, affording more opportunities to observe activity before and after solar heating. Coordinated efforts involving Mars orbiters, Hubble, the James Webb Space Telescope, and terrestrial networks can now adapt more rapidly tracking a greater number of objects and addressing gaps caused by geometry or environmental conditions. What was once a frantic rush evolves into a structured system. The enigma of 3i Atlas, whether it is an anomaly or a new type, is already a part of a significant transformation. The gates are open, future judgments will not be singular. The resumption in December will evaluate whether its orbit aligns with predictions or exhibits unexplained variations. If the trajectory remains stable, it would suggest a natural, albeit unusual, comet. Any departure may necessitate new explanations and prompt urgent follow-up investigations, as surveys like Vera Rubin brace for the discovery of numerous interstellar guests each year. The current blackout highlights both our progress and limitations. For now, 3i Atlas serves as a case characterized by solid evidence, 
unresolved inquiries, and the potential for answers that remain just beyond reach. 